Church, I would like to share with you a message today that will be called God's Chosen Fast. As with all of our messages, the notes for messages are on your YouVersion Bible app that you can just download straight into your computer or they will be available in whatever people will be consuming and re-watching that. If you have your Bible, let's go to Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 3. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen? Why have we afflicted our souls and you did not take notice? And if we go a little bit further, we see that in fact, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and you exploit all of your laborers. Indeed, you fast for strive and debate and to strike with the fist of wickedness. You will not fast as you do this day to make your voice heard on high. And then God begins to kind of again correct the issue of fasting. So I'm going to share with you today about the way God sees a fast. I will be very honest my first confession will be this is that I avoided this chapter. I did not like this chapter when I was fasting because it almost felt like God was dissing on fasting. The same way as this this quote that is going around if you're fasting and gossiping then go ahead and eat you know and of course that quote is said by people who, is, who are not fasting and anybody who shares it usually don't doesn't fast so just so you know you know when you, when you hear stuff like that you're like for those of you who are not fast like yeah that's right all of you fasting people you just bunch of religious more you know like crazy people and so when I read this I I'll be honest with you I was like it's almost like God is like you know you're fasting I don't care about it because you're not good enough that's how I've read it before and so today what I'm going to do is I'm going to, as I've been reading for the last few weeks during this fast, I'm actually going to dive into the context of what this means. I have two short points. One will be about the requirement of God's fast and the other one will be about the reward of God's fast. But before we dive into that, God rebukes Israel and he says, you're saying we fasted and you didn't hear us. We fasted, you did not notice us. And God responds and he's like, you're right. So that tells us not every fast is created equal. Can I say that again for the people in the back? Not every fast is created equal. That means that just because you forgo food and the church is doing it, it does not mean that it actually pleases God. Now it's not wrong. God is not going to strike you or punish you for that. You might lose some pounds and actually feel better afterwards. There's health benefits but the fast that God expects or God honors is the fast that has to honor God. God ignores the fast that ignores Him. Now the Israel was given only one fast to do a year. It was on Yom Kippur so at the end of September beginning of October this fast it was recorded I'm going to read to you one verse about this fast it's in Leviticus chapter 16 verse 29 it says the following this shall be a statue for you forever in the seventh month so that's at the end of uh, September on the tenth day of the month you shall afflict your souls <laughs> that's what we've been doing for the last seven days but this is what God says and do not work at all whether a native of your own country or a stranger who dwells with you so God had two requirements for the Old Testament believers during a fast that he commanded only one fast a year and only one day a year to fast. Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement, pretty much where the priests killed two goats. One goat was sent out as a goat of a scapegoat. It pretty much represented Israel's sin being separated and the other goat was killed and the blood was sprinkled on the mercy seat and this symbolized your sins are paid for and God says when this procession is happening, when your sins are being atoned, covered, I want you on that day to afflict your soul. Now in the original language it simply means and as Israel practiced it for 3,500 years is to fast. This was a fast of walking in, in brokenness before God and part of this fast God commanded Israel to do this. Do not work. Okay. So in Isaiah 58 have you noticed God is coming in and rebuking Israel and he's saying this on the day of fasting he's like I've chosen that day but he said you are working. And on the top of that he says all of the people under you are working. You're making people pull in double shifts and he's like you're exploiting your workers. So God is coming in and saying he's like that's not what I asked you. I asked you very clearly on the day of atonement do not work. So the problem with Israel was that they were disobeying God while fasting. So anytime that we disobey God while fasting well that fast is not going to bring the results that God wants us to bring. So the goal is not to stop fasting. The goal is to stop disobeying God. Come on somebody. 
all right so now for us as Christians that is not a requirement there's nowhere in the Bible in the New Testament where the scripture tells us that if you are fasting stop working so that doesn't apply to us and Jesus' blood covered our sin we no longer have priests bringing once a year two goats killing one and sending one into the wilderness so that is done and completed in Jesus Christ to receive salvation you don't have to fast but you still have to humble yourself come on somebody to receive the gift of eternal life you don't have to mourn and walk afflicting your soul but you do have to surrender your soul are you with me now when it comes to Christian fasting which is different than the Old Testament fasting we don't have to stop working we're not doing it on the day of atonement we don't have the day of atonement we have the day of salvation and the day of salvation could be any day for anybody the rest of the principles will still apply to us now I want you I want you to notice five things God corrects. So five things He requires during His fast that will still apply to us even in the New Testament. And now this is what I'm going to agree with the quote that if you're fasting and gossiping, well go ahead and start eating. I would like to say go ahead and just stop gossiping. But let me highlight five things in the scripture that God says He requires on His kind of a fast. And we will take the verses, so I'm going to do a little bit of reading. So for those of you who brought your Bible or you're, you have your Bible right in front of you, follow me through. This is Sunday morning. This is a church time and this is time for the Bible. In verse 6 of 58, it says the following. Is this not a fast that I have chosen? To loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke. So the first thing that God expects us during a fast is while we're fasting, if we've been doing this before fasting or we're still doing that, this has to stop and that we have to stop hurting other people. It's plain and clear. Now none of us in here have slaves. If you still have slaves somewhere in your basement, stop it. Like that's illegal <laughs> but that's wrong. But since we don't have slavery that's been abolished praise God and we no longer have hold people in slavery who owe us money we simply you know report them to collections and and then the other people deal with them lawyers deal with them and everything we still as Christians are possible to hold people hostage and hurt people with our words and with our behavior in other words if you are fasting and you're holding unforgiveness or bitterness or offense towards somebody God is saying hey this is a good time to let go of that offense let go of that hate that you have toward that person this is a good moment when you're fasting it's a good moment to examine your heart make sure your heart fasting has to lead to forgiveness come on somebody fasting has to lead to forgiveness maybe it's your ex maybe they you you are right to be angry at them maybe you honestly they deserve to burn in hell but you are not the judge you have to release them and God says this is this not a fast I have called and he says hey stop binding people stop putting unnecessary restrictions bondages on people's lives that's not supposed to be there don't make people's life a living hell because you're so self-righteous God's like let go of that stop doing that come on somebody number two I want I want you to notice and it's verse seven is it not to share your bread with the hungry and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out when you see the naked that you cover him the second one is God is saying when you're fasting start helping people so the first one is stop hurting people and the second one is start helping people during a fast it's normal for the Lord to lead you to someone you can help. It could be financially, it could be with an advice, it could be with a contract, it could be with a good deed, it could be with a good word. Pay attention to those promptings. Why? Because God is far more interested not only in the food not coming into our mouth but also things exiting our heart like love, charity, peace and joy. Many times during the fast. So this is called the sin of omission sin of omission simply means it's when you have the opportunity to do something good and you choose not to do that the sin of commission it's it's the other one where we mentioned where you're not supposed to do something and you are doing that and so it may seem like well I'm fasting already everybody leave me alone see but God looks at fasting and he's like I want you to help the poor I want the church to help the poor I want the Christians to help the poor now it's easy to tell eh, you know what they made poor financial decisions it's their problem I'm gonna go ahead and pay taxes and let the government help the poor there's a welfare program there's a homeless shelters it is not my job but my friends when you are beginning to draw closer to the Lord you have to submit yourself to God's requirements 
and God is saying I hold you accountable to help the poor I want you to help the poor the number three I want you to notice what the Lord says if we if we read further into verse 7 it says and do not hide yourself from your own flesh number three means don't avoid your physical and your spiritual family do not hide yourself from your own flesh that simply means don't run from your family now it's easy to run from your family because sometimes you're sick of them you didn't choose them it's like God in heaven chose you put it in it put you into them and the moment you hit 18 you got your college you know you're going to college and after that you're like you know what ask the least I'm gonna see you at Christmas and Thanksgiving and I'm not even sure about the Thanksgiving and Christmas because none of you are vaccinated or maybe you're not vaccinated so they're not inviting you and so you're like you know what I I'm gonna see you later I'm gonna send you a few emojis every few weeks and so you're beginning to avoid your family maybe for some of you a play your family is a place of pain it's a place of hurt it's a place of disappointment it's a place of they rejected you they called you with names and everything but you guys that's still your family even if it's dysfunctional it's still your family maybe your family member is in jail and you're like man I disown my family Christian as a Christian how could you did God ever disown you when you hit into trouble come on somebody well my family doesn't serve God so what they're still your family do not turn your back on your family it's part of the fast God is coming in and saying he says and you pretty much avoided your flesh and blood and it also means your spiritual family you know some of us are really good with the physical family but we sure do not like other Christians or be close to them we're like I just want to come to church and then honestly the moment I'm doing an altar call you're hitting the road you're like I don't want to talk to anybody I don't want nobody to talk to me and the last thing I need to do is go to a small group on Tuesday night and somebody to ask me so how do you feel about that uh no I'm not going there and so you're avoiding your spiritual family I want to challenge you this season stop running from your physical and your spiritual family come on somebody drop that fire emoji in the chat if you're receiving this right now number four Isaiah 58 verse 9 and this and it says the following the the, uh, the last the latter part of verse 9 if you take away the yoke from your midst as we mentioned you know not to do bad stuff but listen to this the pointing of the finger now I'm pretty sure it's not talking about the middle finger because at this time the, the, the this was not the practice of the middle thing this is talking about a person who is in self judging self-righteous condemning way points the finger at other people whether it's at the ungodly or at godly people in other words the Lord is saying remember when you're pointing a finger you got three ones pointing back at you so stop pointing your finger at other people stop judging other people that does not mean that if your brother or sister sins that you cannot come alongside and bring correction but you need to pray for them first and then you speak truth in love there's a difference between speaking the truth and love and the pointing of a finger the pointing of the finger some people have a gift they think they have a gift of the Holy Ghost and some of them today it's pretty obvious online especially all they have is internet connection and they think that because they have an internet connection it entitles them to be an internet police and everybody's live stream and they're doing videos about how this man is, is wrong that man is wrong this person is wrong they're doing absolutely nothing with their life all they're doing is pointing a finger and God's like if you're fasting listen stop pointing a finger come on fasting is a time to repent fasting is not a time to begin to point fingers at other people are you with me number five if we read that verse further it says the following the pointing of the finger and speaking wickedness speaking wickedness uh, amplified bible says speaking harsh speaking wicked words and so what this means is that God is saying as the food is not going in the the Hebrew word for fasting is close your mouth that's fasting and we're doing it's easier to close your mouth with food it's way harder to close your mouth with gossip come on I know it's early on Sunday morning talk to me malice evil speaking judging another person condemning oh did you see her did you see him God is saying I want you to not just close your mouth to food I want you to close your mouth 
to malice, evil speaking, gossip and wrong things. Come on somebody. So the fast that God has chosen requires five things. We stop hurting, we start helping and then it says don't avoid your family, stop pointing fingers and stop spreading rumors, stop gossiping. The church is supposed to be united. The church cannot be united if we backbite everybody. A fasting is a beautiful time to repent of our speech sins, of our vocal sins and we can build with our hands and destroy with our mouth. With our mouth we can speak things about other brother, other sisters. We can speak against the pastors. We can speak against other leaders. We can constantly judge and, and spread that. And, and I just want to encourage you, if you're one of those people that it seems like everything that is wrong in the family or in the business or in the church comes to you and it seems like all of the people trust in you, trust you because like you're such a godly person. It seems like all the wounded people come to you. I want to ask you a question. Is it because you're also wounded? And what are you doing with that? Are you helping to fend the flame of gossip, malice speaking or are you simply bringing water buckets every time somebody's bringing fire and saying you know what we shouldn't talk about like this. If you can't talk to their face don't talk behind their back. If you've never talked to them you shouldn't talk behind their back. Why? Because sooner or later whatever you hear about somebody else that person mark my word three months, four months, six months, will have exactly the same conversation about you to somebody else. Some people just have that gift of walking around and gossiping, walking around and spreading rumors and it divides the body of Christ. We are going to be a united church here at Hungry Gen. We are going to speak love. We are going to speak peace toward each other. Come on somebody, those of you on live stream, drop that I don't know the emoji for stop gossiping but I'm pretty sure somebody can figure out an emoji for stop gossiping but we are not going to gossip we are going to pray for people instead and we are going to if you have a really a big problem we're going to speak to them not about them come on that's the requirement of the fast that God has chosen and the Lord says if we correct these behaviors if we change these behaviors he promises us few things and so this is now I'm going to go into the seven rewards of this fast if we do it the right way. The seven rewards of God's chosen fast. The seven rewards of God's chosen fast. And let's um, look into the first one and that is um, verse 8. So I'm still in the same chapter verse 8. Then your light will break forth like the morning and later on God said the similar thing then your light shall dawn in verse 10 your light shall dawn in the darkness and your darkness will be like a noonday so this simply means that your light will break through and your darkness will become like a noonday so the Lord is saying when I and you us as believers we're fasting in God's way he promises this your light will break through God doesn't say you will get the light that means as a Christian you already have the light but this light will break through. How many of you noticed that about you know first week of fasting or something your spiritual sensitivity to the Holy Spirit is greater than before? Have you noticed uh, that as you're beginning to fast your prayer life goes to another level? Something about this shell life, something about this flesh, something about these carnal desires. I'm not saying that they're gone but they seem to kind of fade away and the light seems to shine brighter that's inside of you. I'm not talking about the new age way where you know everybody kind of has their light and they're trying to keep that light. I'm talking about the light of the world, Jesus Christ shining brighter. The Lord's saying when you're fasting the right way, I will cause your light not to get brighter, I will just cause it to break through because all these restrictions of the flesh and the soul and other things will begin to fade away. In fact, I will cause your darkness because everybody who has light also has some parts in their life that are dark. Where we delete things that nobody hope nobody will see it or we simply oh Lord I'm sorry I did it again kind of a stuff or maybe certain behaviors, attitudes, maybe some people have been having addictions. The Lord is saying I will turn your darkness into a noonday. 
I will turn your addiction and I will turn it into something else. I will take your bad habits and I will turn it to something else. I will take your darkness and turn it into a noon day. I will take your weakness and I will give my strength in that weakness. I will bring revival to your problems and your inner struggles. Somebody give God some praise right now. The second thing I want you to notice, he says in verse 8, your healing will spring forth speedily. And if you go a little bit later in verse 11, the similar thing the Lord says, and he says the following in there, he says, he will strengthen your bones. So twice God says, when you're fasting the right way, not only your light will break through, meaning there will be a spiritual breakthrough, but he's saying there will be healing to your body. That's incredible. This is spoken hundreds and hundreds of years before Christ. That's over two and a half thousand years from now. There is a lot of scientific data that has been done and released already on the power of intermittent fasting. Uh, the fasting is actually pretty popular in our culture today, especially the small fastings and the intermittent fasting. There's a lot of science that is behind that and I'm going to read to you just few of the things that fasting does to your body. Fasting promotes blood sugar control by reducing insulin resistance. Fasting promotes better health by fighting inflammation. Fasting may enhance heart health by improving blood pressure and cholesterol levels. Fasting may boost brain function and prevent neurodegenerative disorders. Fasting aids weight loss and boosts metabolism. Fasting increases a growth hormone which is vital for metabolism. Fasting could delay aging and extend longevity. There's been a science, it's not as much science as the one that I've just read for mainly the smaller fast but there are clinics and I watched few of the doctors this week. Some of them are in Germany, some of them here in the States. Uh, videos that get millions of views on YouTube and these are legitimate doctors. These are not just people who bought their degree on eBay. These are legitimate doctors who, for example, in Germany, they have a clinic where they host people. I think it's over 30 years, host people for extended fastings in the clinic and they do studies on them. They've released a lot of studies but because it's not a lot of people doing this, they cannot necessarily say, well, this, this, this is it. But studies have been done on people who fast for 21 days, including 40 days, just on water. The, the improvements in their health is remarkable. Like I've read some testimonies and these are not Christian doctors. These are not Christian people fasting. These are people who are simply fighting depression, fighting some other things, fighting, taking 20, 30 medications. And they're giving 21 days. They're locking themselves in this clinic. The doctor is watching their vitals and they're you know drinking a little bit of broth during the lunch they're still exercising you kind of you read or you see all of their regime or what they do throughout the day and these testimonies are incredible of what is happening with these people God is promising this in his word if we're fasting the right way your healing will spring forth your bones will be made stronger why because first few days when you're fasting your body is getting rid of all the toxins that's why you feel sicker that's why you feel dizzy a little bit that's why you have you know bad breath for the remaining of the fast but that's why all of these things are happening why because the body is like finally you stopped eating finally we can focus all the energy on repairing the rest of the stuff you've damaged and the body is removing all of those toxins and finally and you're like oh but i'm gonna die no 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 listen, listen to me very carefully there's a difference between hunger and craving. Hunger goes away after three days. Why? Because the, the body begins to eat off of the rest of the cells that, that, not the good cells, don't worry, they're not eating the good stuff. Plus we don't have much good left anyway. Okay, so because of the sin and the curse, a lot of our stuff is already damaged. But the body begins to eat the extra fats. Therefore, your body is fine. But the craving is here. Ask any person who went on a 21 day or 40 day water fast, they'll tell you one thing. After three days, no problem. All the craving you get is right here. Why? Because you're used to eating. Food for us is a source of pleasure, it's a source of comfort and it's a source of community. Like I miss those moments, you know, where we get a chance to, you know, chew on something that's not water. You know, you're like, something is missing in my life and you know, it's a fast but life is so slow. 
you're like it's still two o'clock and it's still only the fifth day it seems like I've been fasting already for three years and it's only one day and a half because everything slows down why because the body is working on the inside supernaturally by God to repair certain things to restore certain things now of course if you're pregnant or you're nursing mom or or if you are um, maybe on some uh, medications and you, you're facing terminal illnesses of course we discourage you highly please do not fast you you will hurt yourself and you will hurt the baby but those of you who are healthy hey jump on let's do it two weeks left let's do it those of you online and you're just watching right now join us for this fast it's when you're fasting the, the, in the first year, in the first month of the year, you're, you're tithing your time. Not just your mon money, you're tithing your time. Even if you do three days and then take a break and do another day or do some kind of a fast in the next 14 days, I believe God will bless it. Let's go further. Benefit number three. The Bible says in here that your righteousness will go before you in verse 8 your righteousness shall go before you and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard I love this it says this your righteousness now it does not mean that if you and I are fasting that God's going to make us more righteous we are righteous by the blood of Jesus Christ righteousness is a gift from God but righteous living is we work out what God has worked in and this is what God is saying as you're going into this year I want your righteousness to go before you and my glory to go behind you that means that you and I are going to be surrounded your righteousness meaning the right living pursuing the Lord doing what is right before God not just before the society not just being politically correct not just doing what everybody is doing but doing something that you know is right before God God's like your righteousness that means you're not going to be a person of compromise your compromise is not going to go before you your righteousness will go before you because God is going to conquer your compromise. God's going to conquer your weaknesses. I'm not saying you'll be perfect but God is saying there will be righteousness about you and God's like when your righteousness goes before you my glory will go behind you. Come on somebody. Not the devil, not your ex, not your, not your past sins, not the Pharaoh trying to hunt you down. God's like my glory, the same way as it happened with Israel, will go behind you. I will protect you behind you and your righteousness will protect you in front of you. A lot of people adventure into businesses, into families, but because they have a lot of hidden sin, what happens is that sooner or later people find out those sins and psh, everything falls apart. But this year as you let God's righteousness and your righteous living go before you and God's glory go behind you, I believe somebody is going to be hashtag protected. Come on. Number four. I want you to see in verse 11 and verse 12. The Lord will guide you continually. No. Um, verse 9. I apologize. Verse 9. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry and He will say, here I am. I want you to notice twice he says then. So when we do the fast in God's way then he says your light, your righteousness, my glory and then he says in here then you will call and I will answer. I love this because God pretty much guarantees a quick answers to prayer. I wonder if lack of fasting and fasting in a way that pleases God is one of the hindrances for answered prayer. God promises then you will call and then you will cry. I will answer. Maybe you're tired of living life praying and not seeing answers. I want to encourage you to fast because the reward of fasting is you will call, I will answer and sometimes you're not going to call because it will be an emergency so you will cry, God help and God's like I'll, I'll, I'll get that, I'll pick that up. I'll answer that. Come on somebody. Number, uh, number five and that is in verse 11 now he says the following, the Lord will guide you continually. I believe that for our church and I want to speak that to every person for this year. Not only God answering our prayer, not only our righteousness going before us, not only the light breaking through, not only our healing springing forth, but God saying I will guide you continually. It might be a conversation you will have with somebody. It will be a random email that you might get. It might be the shower thought. Have you ever had those shower thoughts? 
like that changes the trajectory of your life it could be a, a, a message that you'll receive it could be somebody will say something behind this pulpit and that will have nothing to do with what the Holy Spirit will use it to spark in your heart but the Lord is saying I will guide you and I love this word continually so not just one time I will guide you continually a testimony that I have last year you know when we when we did the fast and one of the things that I prayed and as I'm praying for this year and I'm praying for all of us as well is the Lord guide each one of our people individually and continually Isaiah Saldivar was in my house he was here speaking and then we went after the service to my house we were just uh, chatting eating and Isaiah starts unloading me about how important uh, for me he talks about himself first and he's like how important it is to be on YouTube how many people it can impact and I'm listening at first I'm very defensive defensive I'm like bro you're not a pastor uh, we have a local church I got a lot of stuff to do I don't have this thing to be uh, to, to do this thing that you're doing and he keeps you know he's persistent and so he keeps on going and going and going and going and then came a point where something just switched my heart caught fire I mean literally I'm like burning on the inside that this that this is it so I drop him off at the hotel I'm going to sleep I can't sleep at night I'm tossing back and forth and I'm literally getting this like like that's it God is like speaking to me so I wake up very early like three or four I run to church I'm praying and like I'm literally like on fire like I need a fire truck to put the fire out and I'm texting Isaiah I'm like Isaiah you something happened to me something happened to me you know I fasted three months before for God to lead me it was a casual conversation on Wednesday night at my house but see God knows listen to me once he decides to lead you you won't miss it you won't miss it you will know you will plan not to come to hungry gen but God knows that's where you're supposed to be and he will bring you here that's where you'll find your wife you just won't miss it it will be that one decision it will be that one call and it was still like man so much of my life changed by one thing but please understand God will guide you continually hey so three weeks later you know on Thursday night I launch in my basement start streaming everything changed we started to see now uh, this week I think I broke 220,000 subscribers on YouTube the amount of testimonies that I get today the amount of people that come to our church because of that it's incredible I look back I was I was in the morning today uh, in the early morning prayer and I was kind of reflecting and praying for the church touching the pews praying for people who will sit here praying for people online and I was remembering then I said Lord that's incredible you never showed that to me during a fast but I know that you were planning for that I could have missed it but God's like no you won't because once I decide to lead your life you won't miss it it will be clear your heart will catch fire all of your cylinders are gonna be rrr, rrr. or sometimes there's a still small voice you just know that you know that you know that you know this is God you won't miss it my friend are you with me two more the Bible says in here he will satisfy the afflicted soul so not only the Lord will guide you he will satisfy your afflicted soul that means that when there is another translation says he will satisfy your soul in the land of desert or in a parched place that means if you're going through this year through a parched place through a dry place the Lord promises this that he will still satisfy your soul now this doesn't mean that everything in your life might be all right but he says you will be all right yesterday we had a volcano in the ocean there's waves hitting our shores Washington, Oregon, Hawaii, Alaska and California. Just yesterday one guy came in and tried to uh, take out a, a Jewish synagogue in Texas. Thankfully he was, um, everybody was safe and the shooter and the, that person was taken out. There's a winter blizz heading east coast. We're in the highest rate right now of COVID infections in our region. I'm gonna tell you one thing, this year the world is only gonna get crazier our politics are going to get more divisive there's no going back the world is just getting crazier there's going to be more misinformation online there's going to be more lying more political control online and not just online but in the world everybody's going to try to control your life and God is not saying that your world is going to be wet sometimes the world will be dry he says I'll satisfy you in the midst of it 
I'll satisfy your soul. I'll satisfy your heart. I'll satisfy your family. I will take care of you. I will help you even in the parched ground. You may say, but I will lose my job. You won't lose God's provision. God will satisfy you. Come on somebody. I want you to rise to your feet. Those of you online, I want you to get ready to pray with us right now. I'm going to read to you the last thing. And he says the following. You shall be like a watered garden. Come on, touch your neighbor and say, I'm like a garden. You're sitting next to a garden. And he said, you shall be like a spring of water. Those of you online, drop that in the chat. I will be like a spring of water. Whose waters do not fail. Those from among you shall build all waste places. You shall rise up the foundations of many generations. And you shall be called the repairer of the breach and the restorer of streets to dwell in. The last thing. God is promising if you fast the right way, I'll make you a blessing. The first six things I mentioned how God will bless you. But the last thing God is saying, I'll make you a blessing. Two things I want you to watch. He's saying first I'll make you a garden. You go to a garden to get food. The second thing he says, I'll make you a spring of river. No, no, I'm not talking about glass of water. A spring of river. And then he says this, some of you guys are going to rebuild the foundations for future generations. That means that in your family, nobody believed God, you're the first one. In your family, nobody had a successful marriage, you're the first one. In your family, nobody was there who did not battle with illness. You will lay a foundation for future generations. I don't know who I'm speaking to. And then he says in here, he says, you will restore the ruins of all cities. That means that in our city, we will make an impact for the kingdom of God. That means in San Antonio, we will make an impact for the kingdom of God. That means the devil, that racism, drug dealers, listen, pedophiles, rapists, all of those bad people, whatever they've ruined in our city, maybe some bad pastors or bad Christians who ruined faith for other people. God is saying, I'll watch that you will restore the ruins of an ancient city. That's our church. That's you and I. Come on, somebody. That is Hungry Gen family. We will repair the ruins of our city. Hallelujah. The last thing that he said there is he said and you shall be called the repairer and the restorer. That, mean, that means the people will start calling you by a different name. You'll be known for, not for what you've been known for, but for what God is going to be doing through your life. You'll be known with a different name because of what God is about to do in your life. I want to stand in agreement right now with each and every one of you for these rewards. I'm praying for these rewards for your life. I'm praying for these rewards for my life and for our church. Lord, may your light spring forth. Lord, may healing spring forth. Those of you with diabetes, those of you with problem with insulin in your body, but those of you who have problem with maybe memory already, or you have problem, different challenges in your health. Lord, we're believing for total healing in Jesus name. For those people who feel like everywhere they go, their past hunts them. Lord, may righteousness go before them and your glory go behind them. For those people who feel like, man, I feel stuck in my life. Man, what, I, what, what am I supposed to do? And you constantly live your life in reaction to everybody's problems instead of in response to your purpose. God is saying, I will guide you continually. For those of us in here today who are maybe feel dry and this economy and this political time as well as in this pandemic has really brought your faith down and you really just honestly you're just tired you're afraid you're afraid of building you're afraid of having children you're afraid of dreaming because you're like I don't know what the next guy is going to come in and what he's going to do the world is so crazy God is saying I want to satisfy you in the parched place even in Tri-Cities the desert I will satisfy you come on somebody whatever you are at right now you may be in the poor country you might not have access to education. You might not even have access to living, to water. God is saying, I want to satisfy your soul in a desert. But I believe this is what for everybody. God is saying, I want to make you a blessing this year. I want to make your home to be an open door for other people to be discipled. I want your finances to be a blessing to other people. Some of you this year you will go on the mission trip. Some of you, you are part you're going to participate in healing and deliverance services. Some of you will go out and evangelize on the streets. Some of you are going to join the intercession. Why? Because God has called you to be a garden and God has called you to be a spring of water. Come on, lift those hands right now. I want us to begin to pray right now just for that. 
begin to intercede right now just for that begin to ask the Holy Spirit say Holy Spirit let these rewards fall upon me let your light break through come on pray through these seven rewards right now those of you online I want you to pray through these seven rewards right now over your life place your hand up on yourself one hand up to God those of you on zoom raise your hands right now pray over these seven rewards over your life maybe this may this be the year father we ask you Lord that this would be the year Lord where things will break father we ask you father that this will be the year Lord where financial burdens Lord financial curses over our life will break father we ask you Lord for the things that you have asked us to receive from you Lord we ask you Lord that you would allow this year Lord to break Lord the things off of our life that has caused stagnation father we ask you Lord that your word is true and evident in our life we ask you father that you would Lord break the curse Lord of lack or poverty father we ask you father that you would fill and satisfy our Lord our soul that you would satiate father the very thing in our hearts and in our souls father that you know that we need father we ask you Lord that through this fast Lord that we would do it, Lord, with our hearts open, with our hearts desiring, with our hearts, Lord, open to receive what you have, Father. We ask you, Lord, that this year would not be like the last, or, Lord, Father, but it would be, Father, a new generation, Father, a new thinking, Father, a new perspective, a new occurrence in our hearts and in our lives. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, I pray that blessing over every person online, and those in person may your light break forth may your healing break forth Lord I ask you in Jesus name when we call may you answer us lead us this year into prosperity lead us this year into breakthrough lead us into wisdom I pray for those that are overwhelmed with their prosperity that you will give them wisdom Lord God let supernatural leading happen this year Father I pray for those that you will let the righteousness and the glory of God follow them in Jesus name Lord for those that are in the dry season or maybe things are going to get harder for their life I pray that their soul is going to be satisfied and Lord I pray that each and every one of us that this year we will be a blessing that we will be like a garden and like a spring of water that we will rebuild ruins that we will lay foundation for future generations and that we will be known not by our wealth but by our generosity but by our giving by the people we're helping Lord we choose to fast your way we choose to repent we repent of gossip we repent of rumor spreading and malice Lord we repent of hurting people we release forgiveness Lord we choose to help the poor Lord God we are not going to point our fingers at other people we're going to examine our own heart in repentance. Lord, we're not going to avoid our family and our spiritual family. We're not going to run. We're going to run to them, Lord. In Jesus' name. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed this content and this was a blessing to you, would you help us and hit thumbs up so that it could help more people to discover this video. It costs you nothing, but it can go a long way to help with the algorithm. As well as if you're not subscribed to our channel, hit subscribe, click on the bell so that you can be reminded each time that we upload videos. Thank you so much for being a part of this community. If you're interested in learning more about Hungry Gen, our internship, our conferences, deliverance and so many other things, go to HungryGen.com for more information. And as always, remember, better is not good enough, the best is yet to come.